testimony in the federal corruption trial against Congresswoman, former Congresswoman Corrine Brown wrapped up. Now the trial is taking place in the federal courthouse right behind me. And today a lot happened. The jury was seated, opening statements were made, and the government called its first two witnesses to the stand to testify. And a lot is on the line for the co former Congresswoman who served 12 terms in Congress. Corrine Brown is looking at the possibility of spending up to 357 years in prison, essentially the rest of her life behind bars, if she's convicted of the 22 counts against her involving conspiracy and mail and wire fraud and filing false tax returns. Now, what you're looking at right here was right before court started this morning, she was greeted by a group of pastors who came together to pray for her and to sing with her. And she got pretty emotional. I feel like ministers are here today this morning to pray for me as I get ready to go in the courtroom and I think that is the key. Now all along Brown has maintained her innocence but the government says this comes down to two things go a corruption and greed and that Brown knowingly used money from the bogus charity One Door for Education to line her pockets and to sustain a lavish lifestyle. The defense, though, says the former congresswoman put absolute trust in her former chief of staff, Ronnie, Ronnie Simmons, who was by her side for 30 years and that it was him who was responsible for this scheme and that he took advantage of her and she did not know what was happening with One Door for Education. We have team coverage for you tonight and we want to begin with my colleague, Clark Foraker, who was in the courtroom today and has more on day one. Clark. The jury got a taste of just how tedious this trial is going to be because of the two witnesses they heard from this afternoon. One and a developer out of Orlando who made a $10,000 check to one door for education, but longer testimony coming from an FBI special agent who was the one that reviewed and analyzed all of Corrine Brown's bank records and tax records. She laid out a scheme by which money was taken from the one door for education bank account and placed into two different personal bank accounts of Corrine Brown. Of course, defense attorneys on Corrine Brown's side, this all happened at the hands of Ronnie Simmons they are placing all of this on him, trying to make him look like the guilty party. The assistant U.S. attorney Tyson Duva, who's led the effort against Kareem Brown and brought these charges, he says this is a case of corruption and a sense of entitlement, he says, at the highest levels of government. The jury will be back in the courtroom for more tedious testimony tomorrow at 9 a.m. Live downtown, I'm Clark Foraker. Back to you, Heather. Clark, thank you. This was a 53 page indictment, 24 count indictment against Corrine Brown and Ronnie Simmons, a, a complicated case with a lot of people involved, allegedly. So there's a long list of potential witnesses we could hear testify during uh, the course of this trial. And for more on the key players involved in, in this trial, in this case, Stephen Dial continues our team coverage. This trial includes a who's who of Jacksonville that could be called to testify during the case. And this case involves one thing, money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were raised for One Door for Education. One Door is the charity at the center of this case. So here's the players. Former Congresswoman Kareem Brown's former chief of staff, Ronnie Simmons, already pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Brown. He admits that he helped create the charity. The next player is Vaughn Alexander. She is a former congressional employee of Brown and a lobbyist. She's accused of funneling money from the charity bank account into Brown's accounts and others. Speaking of lobbyists, a potential person to testify is Susie Wiles. She helped President Donald Trump win Florida. She also hired Vaughn Alexander as a lobbyist. Remember, this case is all about money. So here are some well-known people who donated money to the charity. They could be called to testify. Michael Ward is the former CEO of CSX. He and his wife donated more than $35,000 to Brown. Don Miller is with Picerin Real Estate. He donated $58,000 to the charity. Marva Brown Johnson is with Bright House Network. She donated more than $10,000 to the annual scholarship fund, then $10,000 for a charity golf tournament held by former Congresswoman Corrine Brown, and $20,000 plus for various dinners and galas. Jack Hanania is a local car dealership owner. He donated about $7,000. John Baker is with Florida Rock and Tank Lines. He donated $30,000 to the charity. And the folks that I just named would be called for the prosecution. 
There's also some national names like Martin Luther King III, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and three current members of Congress. They will be speaking in support of former Congresswoman Corrine Brown. Back to you. Stephen Dial, thank you. So this trial is expected to last about two to three weeks. Court will resume at nine o'clock in the morning here at the federal courthouse right behind me. And we have a digital reporter dedicated to covering this trial who will be in the courtroom each and every day, keeping you up to date on all of the developments as they unfold. We have exclusive content on our website at firstcoastnews.com and we will have more in-depth coverage of the corruption trial against Corrine Brown tonight on First Coast News at 11. That is the latest from downtown Jacksonville. Anthony, we'll send it back to you. Heather, thank you. We are continuing to follow some breaking news right now at 6. Monument